Welcome everyone, we're here for our last European session of the Community Live Lounge. There will be plenty more in here for Max. Straight into our interview with our Max speakers today. Before we start, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you at home who are tuning into the sessions, making Max so special again this year. And it means that we have the honor of speaking to really special guests such as Marina Willer today. Marina, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Lovely to, to meet you. And uh, yeah. I can't see everyone, but lovely to, to meet everyone. We have everyone in the chat who's saying hi today. It's been amazing to kind of, yeah, have your names, where you're from. Tell us if you've seen the keynote and if you've seen Marina's session uh, fresh from today. Marina, how's your Max been so far? How was your session? I think it was very good. There were, I think, 57, 1700 people. Uh, oh, lovely comments. So thank you, everyone. Uh, great. It's just great to, to be able to participate. Uh, the energy is very positive and I think we've been so disconnected in the world today. It's good to be able to share a little bit of what's going on and the behind the scenes of our work. Yeah, and it would be great actually. It's a perfect start for you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about your session, the themes and kind of vision you had for it. 
Yes, so I, I, um, I'm Marina Willer. I'm a partner at Pentagram, which is a design agency based in London. We've got offices in New York uh, and in Europe as well. Um, and we, we do branding for all kinds of things from like MIT through to uh, Alexander McQueen and uh, Tiffany's. We do a lot of charities. We, yeah, I've done branding for uh, a lot of art galleries like Tate and so on. So I'm here, I think, to answer some questions about what I spoke about. And I did talk a lot about the behind the scenes and how we've been working in lockdown and these last crazy two years. Um, yeah, it's been quite hard for everyone, I guess. Yeah, something amazing about your session is um, how you mentioned inspiration and, you know, how it's kind of kept you going for the last year. You find inspiration in a very kind of craft-like approach around you um, and it's often mentioned um, and also your Brazilian origins. So there's a, a huge kind of scale and range of um, experiences that you have um, that you kind of bring into your work. Um, so let's talk a bit about Pentagram as well. So what makes Pentagram and your work so successful to your opinion and how has the last year been? Sorry, we're just having a little problem with the pro, uh, progress the <laughs> slides here. Give us one second. We're all. Of course. How was it for came in the room? Oh, amazing. so it plays on its yes. We have a presentation going, going at back. the same time. <laughs> well, they asked us to. You guys asked us to have a few slides. So that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of moving in the background. You get a sense yeah. of how we work. Uh, I think. Yes, yeah, so I, I talked a lot in the session about uh, working from home and this is what you see here. I've worked, uh, I, I, because I'm Brazilian, I use a lot of color and uh, in this process uh, of lockdown, I have been doing a lot of things by hand, uh, analog things, so getting away from the computer when I can and um, and making sure that I'm not just um, suffering from screen fatigue as such. And being at home, I do a lot of things with my children. That inspires my work and I inspire them, hopefully. So you see a lot of color throughout uh, what we show here. And this is like the behind the scenes. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the work and how we work. Yeah, so something that you've talked about is this childlike innocence um, and trying to find that in your approach to creativity. Um, what is your tip for everyone at home and in the chat who's trying to find this inner childlike innocence? And I can see a lot of the work from your children, for example, in this presentation. Yeah, I think we get, uh, as, we, as we work uh, over the years, we start to do a lot of things um, that if we're not careful, uh, sort of design mechanisms that we see each other doing and, and the work can get repetitive or not authentic enough. So to me, it's important to find inspiration back in things that are based on ordinary everyday life and the way that children do things, they come from a very different place to us. We over perhaps analyze things and overthink whilst when you are um, young um, and, and as a child, I think you have an enormous curiosity and, and you approach things from very unusual ways. That's why I feel very inspired by my children, also other children, and I do a lot of things with them. And we, during lockdown, even changed the house completely so that it became much more like a playground almost or a, an art room where we have big spaces for painting and doing things with color and tape and and things that you saw in these little you know the the slideshow I just showed yeah and you also talk about character as human being and absorbing the world around you being very present um do you ever face creative rut are you ever stuck um and how do you manage it I think we all have moments where it's not that you're, you run out of ideas, it's more that uh, the problems you're trying to solve 
have very challenges and you need to make sure you are sort of there as well as creating something that is very original. Uh, so that balance is what is difficult at times. So I'm thinking just before getting a call here with you guys, I was upstairs with the team and we, we're working for one of the brands that we're working for needs to, to look really original as always and feel like a movement and do so many things. But it also has a very difficult name and then it, it's difficult to make that name work, for example, because of the complexity. So you have always limitations, which are good because they provoke you to think in different ways and try to solve those problems. Uh, but I think if um, if you always say you're present and when you're walking around or doing things, you're observing things and you're looking at colors and shapes and geometry on things. You find ideas everywhere. So um, I, I think that's the, the curiosity is the key factor to, to make ideas uh, and find ideas uh, and not stuck. Yeah. And how did that, you know, moving on to some projects that you mentioned in your session um, and some client work that you've done, how did that help you? I know you've worked with, you know, Rolls Royce and uh, the British, British Film Institute as well on sight and sound. Um, what are some examples of your approach to um, handling these clients? Yeah, I think that, that that's it's almost like it seems not like a paradox of the two sides of the coin. But I see sometimes people describing uh, the way they approach clients in a way that feels uh, like it's following a formula. And to me, it's important that the two things, one, that we are extremely strategic in what we do, which doesn't look like the images you see in this slideshow, for example. So we go through a journey with the clients, which is really digging deeply into what is the problem, what are they they trying to communicate? What's their unique point of difference that we then can build a brand language from? Uh, and this is very strategic. And sometimes we work on our own on that. Sometimes we follow up from work that other st strategists might have developed. But the other side of that is accumulating you know, almost like a library of colors, shapes, ideas, form, um, ways of writing uh, and, and many, many ideas, which then will find a, a place. So it's a, it's a combination of being really organic and fluid in finding ideas and not, not controlling too much the way the outcome will happen, uh, as well as really trying to listen to what the strategy and the needs of a client are so you're responding to those needs and not just creating decorative work which is a risk i think if you just want to do something that is trendy or is kind of hip or something it uh, might not have anything to do with the strategy or it might not be long lasting. So I think all of those considerations are important. Uh, it's almost like one side of the brain is really intuitive and exploring things in a very open way. And the other side of the brain is really putting a structure and a framework to what you're trying to solve so that you create work that will really make a difference to clients and make their brands uh, much more valued, much more uh, spot on to respond to what they, their ambition is. Yeah, you have such a personal approach when you talk about this. And I also want to make sure that we have some time for questions from the chat. So I will transition a little bit to this as well. Um, and it seems in the chat that there's already a clear understanding that it's not all rose and positive and the last year has brought a lot of challenges and um, I don't want to necessarily say difficulties but challenges um, that everyone hasn't been prepared to tackle and we have Joe from the chat who's asking um, color and positivity have always been such a notable aspect but how have the struggles of the last year kind of had an impact on you? I think it's almost that's the reason why you see all of that um, you know, I don't want to say that I'm creative or anything, but there's a real effort to be making things. And it's something that happened very much during lockdown. I've always had the habit of doodling and painting 
and pebbles and branches and things, but it became much more my routine in lockdown because in lockdown we were very busy with work, but the time that we had, whether it's in the evening or on the weekends or whatever, we were locked in. So we had to find things to do, which would uh, help also to make the mind happy. And uh, I always say that doodling and drawing is like meditation. So that to me is, is a really important part of, you know, having gone through this process. I think like everyone else, you know, I, um, I always, you know, share, I have chronic migraines. So drawing has always been a little bit of a meditation for me, doing things that are just relaxing. And we work a lot here. So you have to have other sort of, tools in the box to make sure you're not thinking about work all the time and that you can feel more liberated and and also let the mind just you know uh move away from work a bit to do other things that are creative yeah and i know you've done a lot of these interviews and talks on your general approach to yeah and you know those challenges and your migraines for example so um, we all bring this um, life and, you know, pentagram is your family. You've talked about pentagram being your family, but you have your own as well. And that brings a whole other um, side of, of the coin as well. Um, and I want to move on as well to Shanna's question in the chat on best advice for recently graduated um, aspiring designers and art directors. Any tips for anyone who's new in the industry? I think uh, I know it's hard times and it's it's very difficult for anyone to find a job and, uh, you know, get going uh, in the industry. But my tip is always, if you show talent and determination, uh, there will be a place for you. And the more original and, and courageous you are, uh, just never stay home and watch TV. You know, I think go out, set your own little personal projects. I think we creatives um, and designers love looking at personal projects as well as the projects you might have done for clients. Um, just keep your your brain and your mind and your heart alive, and not not kind of sit at the sofa. I think I think that's a way to you know, and and think good things will happen if you keep your curiosity and keep working on on creativity. Yeah, it's finding those little moments as well. We have uh, Dina from the chat who's saying that she's missing the decompression that driving home from the office gave her. Um, and those little moments that we used to have in connection to people um, have been kind of cut off in the last year. So um, some others are saying that they hate commuting to work. So um, we're seeing a little bit of everything um, to find those moments of unexpected creativity or just um, a break. Um, moving on to some other questions, um, breaking up monotonous working from home routine um, you, or routines in general, um, how do you shake things up? <laughs> I know you mentioned just now that you are doing a lot with your children at home. Any other advice for changing a routine that's not working anymore? I think that the, everything you said is so spot on. Like, if you don't like the routine of going to work, try something different try cycling, try walking half of it, try a different way. I think the monotony of, you know, the repetitive patterns is um, in life can be, you know, challenging. So I think keep changing those things. It's, it's, and I think it's been a really amazing opportunity for people to, you know, some people change their lives completely or, or move to other parts of the country or, you know, I think it's the time to shake things up and uh, all of these exercises i i wouldn't have been doing them as a routine if it wasn't for lockdown i think i i would do them now and then but it's become a real big part of my life and and, and they're quite addictive you know uh, you can do that while you're watching a film or um, you know i think it's just finding the things that you love and that are important to you i think we each are very different i also find i've worked in branding for quite a while and i see how bigger companies work and it feels very samey the process that people go through and that's why i think the challenge of bringing originality and a different approach that is unique to you is so important and even when i'm working with rolls royce for example it's such a prestigious brand I think 
they they must have chosen us because they know we're coming from a different place almost and that sense of your own way combined with a very solid strategy that is making sure we are answering the brief to the client but doing the best work we can do and making it as original as it can be is really key to you know to keep to keep everything going and to get good projects and you know whichever stage you are of um of your design life and trajectory Absolutely. And I think Colin is uh, right on spot on with a little bit more um, of a question directed towards how you work with your clients. Um, and he's asking from the outset of any design project, do you generate many ideas and whittle them down? Or is it more that you have a main direction and you pursue it um, straight from the beginning? It really depends. I think the main thing is to follow first this phase that is strategic, as I said, and 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 distill down to what kind of position does a brand need to have to stand out and to reflect the unique point of view of a client. So we have to really work on that. And as you define that by having many conversations with different people in the client's teams, by doing research, by looking at everything that is happening with the competition, you start to understand what place you want to occupy uh, in the market, let's say, even if it's not a commercial organization, there's always competition. So with that journey, as you are developing all of those tabs, you are also coming up with ideas because they tell you a lot about the type of brand you need to create, the type of design you need to create, the type of problem you need to solve. And then if you are prolific in kind of you know, creating ideas in different ways and doing whatever it is, photography, drawing, uh, writing, uh, typography, coding, film, all these different things, you will see that, that that sketchbook of ideas will come to use and will, you know, think ideas almost find a place that is right for them when the time comes. And is there uh, any kind of educational process you have to do with some clients? We have a question from the chat and it's a difficult question to answer. I already know, but have you had to educate a client who was bent on bad design? How did you go about it? Is there any bad design or how do you work with um, these kind of conversations? I think that kind of conversation is always a part of what we do. I don't think there is... Yes, there is bad design in the sense that design is a profession like architecture is a profession that needs, you know, we need to learn the skills and you need to learn how to craft. And sometimes you see things that are badly crafted and you have to explain um, why that doesn't feel right. Because there are times when the, the client will bring you a typeface they like or a color they like and you say, but, you know, what's that got to do with what we're trying to do? Are we trying to explain why that, that isn't of a caliber, let's say, that reflects their, you know, their position in the world? And, and, and it does happen. It's, I think part of the process is we are being educated in what the client does and the client's being, you know, it sounds patronizing, but I think we're learning from each other, I hope. And, good clients are the ones who listen and want to learn about the things which we have to offer if they just tell you what to do it doesn't tend to be the best result because it's a bit like going to the doctor and telling them what they need to prescribe to you which you know you might as well do it without the doctor then <laughs> so yeah it's an interesting but and, and remembering the previous question i think if the process the process defines itself and, and finds even the design solutions. But sometimes you see that it's necessary to propose more than one solution so we can compare the type of tonality and the type of behavior that a brand for such a client would have. But sometimes it's so clear that it's going in one direction that it feels almost artificial to propose more than one the process is exactly what kind of brand you need to do. So it, it's, it, it does vary a bit. And I think the main thing is the decision should not be made based on taste, but it should be made on 
based on what the job needs to do, the audience it needs to reach and many things like that. Well, thank you so much, Marina. We're actually flying off. I just noticed the time um, and we might have been cut off on, on the Max website. So if you're on Behance or YouTube, we're still here. Um, the sessions feel so short, but I really enjoyed all your answers to our questions. So thank you everyone in the chat for joining us, bringing your questions. Stick around for more Community Live Lounge uh, streams. And thanks, Marina. It's been really great speaking to you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Take care, thank guys, you. everyone. Bye. Bye.